As Helen Keller said, avoiding danger is no safer in the long run than outright exposure. The fearful are caught as often as the bold. So if you know that you're at risk no matter what you do, then you might as well be one of the bold because the bold are the ones that get the thing that they're putting themselves at risk for. But if you're being timid, if you're standing back and you're still likely to get caught, called out, lose, fail, be embarrassed, and you don't have the potential upside, then there's no advantage to being in that state. Fear begets fear. The more that you give into that, the less that you're willing to be bold, the less that you're willing to step out. Every moment that you spend, hidden, pulled back in, afraid, that fear begins to magnify. That fear begins to feed itself. It gets in a loop. And that's when it becomes this indomitable force. And then suddenly the very thing that you're fighting against is simply the overwhelming amount of fear, which never would have become overwhelming if you had simply acted as if you were bold. At some point, that's it. You just have to strike. You just have to get up and take action. And it isn't that either one is safe. I'm not saying that being bold won't come with its price. It will. And that price may be extraordinary, but it will be no more extraordinary. In fact, I'll say it will be less than if you allow the fear to feed on itself, because just as the fear begins to reinforce, being bold begins to reinforce. One bold move stacks on the next, and suddenly, as your life progresses and you try more things and you fail and you learn and you get up and you grow stronger, you look back on your life. And even just 10 years ago, you can't recognize who you are. That is the process of taking risk. That's the benefit of being bold and striking out. You will adapt. You will grow in either direction. Do you want to adapt to fear? Or do you want to adapt to growth, to change, to pursuit, to being bold? And as Marie Curie said, we must believe that we are gifted for something and that this thing, at whatever cost, must be attained. And that's how you get bold. That's how you take that first move. You choose to believe that in you is the ability to do something. And even if the only ability you can allow yourself to believe in is that you can learn, that's enough. That's enough to give you the impetus to take that first step, to say, I don't know this now, but I can learn this, and I'm going to take that first terrifying step in the knowledge that it's the step that educates and that one step teaches me something that allows me to take step two and then three and so on and so forth. And sometimes there might be something even more. You might recognize in you something that you're already good at, something that you can build on, a strength that you can begin to magnify and go out. But that's where all of your energy should be on, the things that you can do. You can learn, you are good at, you're willing to go and push yourself to grow and get better at that thing. Put all of your energy there. Don't spend your time thinking about what might go wrong. Instead, think about why it must happen. Why does it matter to you? Why do you care enough to put yourself through this? Why are you stepping out? Why are you being bold? What is it that matters to you? Once you have that thing, that is the one gift. If I could just give, I would give, but I can't. It must be earned. You have to earn what you want. You have to know what it is. You have to do the work to find that thing, that interest, to turn it into a raging inferno of must have. That thing that at no matter the cost, you're going to attain. When you have that, you will find all of a sudden actions are easy. What becomes hard is stopping yourself. So put yourself in that position where momentum is the default. You've got two choices in life. Choice one, you can become somebody else. Choice two, you can become yourself. Now, I really wish that there was only one choice, but in truth, there's not. And most people choose to try to become someone else because it's a roadmap. It's points in a direction. You see someone, you respond to something, you admire them, you want to be like them. And in that process, you've made your decision. In that process, you've decided to become somebody else. You have mistaken the finger for the moon. Instead, you need to understand that being inspired by somebody does not mean to become that person, to become that which inspires you. It is to understand fundamentally what is it about that thing that excites you? What is it? What is its essence? 
And when you can find its essence, then you can find out how it would apply to you becoming you. And as Zen Shi says, a flower does not think about competing with the flower next to it. It just blooms. And that's really your job, is to see the outside world, to see the flower next to you, to understand the amazing things that are happening all around you, all of the incredible people and the essence of what they have and what it is that they've done to bring inside yourself and find out what does that look like when it's me. Not what do I look like when I'm them. And once you understand the difference between that, then you can really begin to be something unique. You can become that thing that you were meant to be, that thing that makes you feel alive and whole. And that's it, that's the secret. You're just trying to be something, not that's just inspiring to other people, but that you actually wanna wake up every day and be. And that's the fucking thing about it. There's no escaping you. Whatever you become, a lie, the truth, somebody else, yourself, whatever it is, you're gonna spend every day of your life there. And as Albert Einstein said, Everybody's a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it's stupid. And that's what confuses people. People believe that they're dumb because they're not finding their path. They're not defining things based on what excites them and what they want to live with every day. They're just looking to what the outside world says is good. And I think it's incredible that there are other people doing things that are so extraordinary that we aspire to be like that. But you have to understand the difference between being like someone and trying to actually be them. So if what inspires you is that somebody works hard, work hard. If what inspires you is that somebody gets up every time they fail, get up every time you fail. If what you like is that they're themselves with all their weird eccentricities and quirks, then be true to your eccentricities and quirks, but don't try to embody their eccentricities and quirks. That's the surest way to become the fish that thinks it's stupid because it's being judged by trying to climb a tree. So as Scott Belsky said, when 99% of the people doubt your idea, you're either gravely wrong or about to make history. And that's the terrifying part. You're not gonna know. You're not gonna know the difference. But if you're chasing somebody else's path, if your whole game is emulation, if your whole game is to mimic that which inspires you, you will never find the thing that's real about you. And look, I don't know about you, but I can be wrong. I can be gravely wrong. I can have people think me an idiot and try something and fail as long as it was true to me. Because then the lesson that I'm gonna learn is going to apply. It's gonna take me another step closer to actually being the person that I want to become, that I want to live with every day. But I can't be that if I don't understand who I want to be. So look inward, identify your path, identify what excites you and go after it as if your life depends on it. Because in truth it does.